be a man. Become a legend, like the wizard. Make the switch today to Beard and Blade. This autumn, Milwaukee Tool has you covered with a comprehensive lineup of pro grade chainsaws and hatchets designed to tackle any cutting task with ease. No pull starts, no petrol fumes, no downtime for ongoing engine maintenance. Find your closest authorised trade partner today at milwaukeetool.com.au and experience the power and performance for yourself. Milwaukee, nothing but heavy duty. This episode is also brought to you by our friends at Beard and Blade, Australia's largest online men's grooming company. With over 1 million website visits, 500,000 satisfied customers, and their extensive range of products. From razors, beard oils, shaving creams, to skincare and hairstyling products. Making them your one-stop shop for all your manly grooming needs. Simply visit beardandblade.com.au and make the switch today to Beard and Blade. Another massive guest today and plenty more to come. So make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. Righto, let's get straight into the show. Good to have you back, brother. Love doing it. We've never done a one-on-one. No, first one, which is good. I've only ever done a one-on-one podcast. Oh, really? So, yeah, so this is good. You're on the radio a fair bit, aren't you? Go to the radio a fair bit. Yeah, I did Nova last year and they um, have sacked everyone. Now I'm doing a bit of Triple M, so yeah, yeah. it's good. Oh, so Nova's got rid of everyone. Everyone, Jonathan Brown, Sam Payne, um, Chrissy. Yeah, they all went. I think Chrissy's doing maybe an Arvo now, but yeah. yeah, got rid of everyone, just flushed them out. Must be a new strategy internally. Well, they're doing, but ratings are good, so interesting Weird, strategy, yeah. but see how they go. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, do you love doing radio? I love it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good fun. It's I like doing that type of radio because you can say things and, you know, it doesn't make top headlines or whatever. Um, a bit more relaxed vibe where, um, yeah, grilling teams and grilling ex-players and stuff, like that's not my go. Nah, nah. I, I was saying before, I, I, I don't like, like... I don't want to give too much clout. So I'm not going to even reference the people, but I've, we've been getting a little bit of press lately from people on the podcast and um, and it's always out of context. It's always like a real negative story to make you pick it up. Yeah. A- and, it, and it annoys me because yeah. it doesn't annoy me. It's like, okay, you're giving us a pump up. I get that. But our, like people like yourself and the, the guests we've had on, they take time out of their day. They're real open. They're real. They're honest. And then they whack them for a joke, yeah. put it on national TV. It's like- well, and then they go and say like, oh, they don't have personalities anymore and, you know, they're just robots and all this stuff. But it's like, you got to be careful what you say now because they blow it out so much then it's out of context most of the time. Mate, so big time. And that's what I love about this. Like we, we've all got relationships and we've, you know, from way back. So we come on here, relax, talk yeah. shit. But yeah, like out of context, national TV, yeah, big yeah. audience. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, th- they then wait for the results of a team. It's a team sport, yeah, right? Yeah, so they only, then they blame it, for, you know, individual's mindset of a <laughs> joke. Oh, they, it's, it's just interesting. And then they, yeah, they contradict themselves by saying, oh, we want personality. We want more celebrations. Yeah, exactly it's like, want, well, then. why are you guys whacking them on the side? Yeah, so, them and yeah. then obviously clubs, you know what the clubs are like. They're like, well, if it's going to get to the point where we've got to keep, you know, I think they're getting better clubs, aren't they? They're like, yeah. you know, boys, we want yeah. you to be out there, be yourself. But back in the day, I remember it was like, just to avoid all this, that, you know, outside noise, we're just going to stop you from doing media. Yeah. And it's well, like you said as well, you build trust there. Like obviously we've been mates for a while now. So there's trust there. And then there's some people you just maybe are on the side of caution or maybe just say no. Mm. So, um, but nah. Yeah. That's why, and that's why radio is good. I used to love it when, when I lived with Chris Main back in the day, he was always on radio. Yeah. And we used to love it because we'd drive to training together, but the mornings he was on, he wouldn't let us in the car because he just couldn't trust <laughs> us. So, like saying something next yeah, to him or whacking. Live radio, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like or when he's on the phone, you'd run up and like slap him on the ass. So he's like trying to get away from you <laughs> and he's just like live on radio. Yeah, but yeah. they are good characters. I know in um, Perth, like I'd see Shawnee McManus and the crew there um, and, and you go on there and they're just larrikin. Like they're yeah, just good. Just, Great energy. It's a bit different to TV, I reckon. A bit more jovial and um, yeah, larrikins. Yeah. yeah, great result. Um, being on the radio, mate. I wanted to start. Uh, you had a big off. I mean, off season feels like a lifetime ago. But mate, congratulations. You got married. Um, I wanted to talk about that. How was that? It would have been. Was there a lot of planning involved with you and Taylor? With I know, I know that we don't want to talk about COVID, but the last three years for weddings have been a disaster. Were you guys pretty smooth, or was that a secondary uh, one? Wedding, wedding wise, yeah, very smooth. Uh, engagement, not so smooth. So, um. Planned to uh, engage with Taylor down at Sorrento and all this stuff and told a few people and probably told too many people, to be honest. <laughs> and then we got called into this mini hub where we went to Sydney for like two or three weeks and that. 
And so then that postponed those plans. And I was like, oh, fuck, I have, oh, fuck up. Yeah, I've told too many people. They're going to tell their missus and missus will tell someone and all this stuff. So I was shitting them. But luckily everyone was good to me and, yeah, got back. And in the end I realised um, I just wanted to do it at home on the porch where we have a coffee every morning, just something very low-key and basic. So that was good. And then wedding, yeah, off-season was unbelievable. Got married up in uh, Goldie, just a small wedding, and then um, had another wedding, a few weddings, Castagna and all that. And then the spring carnival, which I know we'll touch on later probably, but um, spring carnival was awesome. Yeah. And then went away for the honeymoon. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Let's yeah, start with the, awesome. um, yeah, it is. And that's great, mate. Let's start with the, uh, with the proposal. Like I love asking people cause there's a lot of, you know, it's, you get really nervous. It's a massive occasion. You obviously, they're going to say yes, I reckon, and, you know, obviously everyone's saying yes, but there's just something about the lead up that you know, everyone gets real nervous. So, and, and you try not to be weird. Did you feel like yeah. you were doing weird things to- 100%, and yeah. You, I was and a, they weren't picking up on it, but you're like, oh. No, she was picking up on it, 100%. Yeah, she was like, because it was freezing cold morning. We normally go out and have a coffee, but not when it's that cold. It's just stupid. Yeah. And I needed to get it done. So I'm like, let's go and have a coffee outside. And she's like, fuck that, it's freezing. I'm not going out there. And I'm like, oh, come on, it'll be good. Like, it's a nice morning, blah, blah, blah. Let's spend some time together. So- just by pure chance too, like similar to here, I had the, the security camera at home sitting down and we had this little bench there and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking in my head, yeah, all right, when can I do it? When can I do it? I started like breathing like real heavily and going real weird. And she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah all good. And I, I just need to do it. Like just pull the bandaid off. So I've got up, turned around and I've prepared like over the, I had this three, uh, as I said before, we went to the hub for three weeks. So I've had this speech probably planned for five weeks now of what to say, how much I love her, how amazing she is, all this stuff. And I got up, got on one knee, looked at her and was just like, will you marry me? <laughs> just <laughs> fucking yelled in her face. Will you marry me? And she was just like, and I, I'm pretty jovial with Larrikin, you know, like having a laugh. And she's like, looked at me and she's like, you're kidding. And I'm like, Nah, and like yelled at her again, like, will you marry me? And she's like, yeah, of course. And then obviously after that, it was just, yeah, I can't remember much, bit of a blur, but yeah, that's awesome. I had all these amazing things that I was thinking, yeah, I'll tell her that she's beautiful. She's amazing yeah. and all this stuff. Yeah, and yeah. But like you said, oh, it's just the weirdest feeling that goes through you and um, yeah, it was incredible. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's great. Taylor would have got it all. So. Yeah, I saw, I saw when you and Taylor put it up. That's yeah, epic that you, you caught it. You just sit there and go... <laughs> big deep breaths before she happens and in we go yeah oh it's brilliant oh yeah. man there's never a bad story like the lead up yeah. I've got so many blokes that have had smooth rides and what it is that what I've you know come to you know conclusion with it's, it's the plan it never goes to plan no, and that's plan. what rattles everyone so you yeah. almost just need a oh you kind of the plan is you know it's really nice so it's if you've got a solid one and it, you know you, <laughs> there's always like a weather or something yeah. goes wrong or the missus just has, had a bad day and she's like not interested yeah, and you're not like fuck today. what I need to get it before <laughs> yeah. Change your mind. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant, mate. What about the um, Bucks party? Where did you go for that one? I didn't have a Bucks. Oh, you didn't have a Bucks? No, nah, I didn't have a Bucks. It was a bit too hard because obviously- um, Perth boy. Yeah, Perth boy, best mates back there. Got a lot of best mates here now. Um, and so they all work back in Perth. So um, time off for the wedding was was enough for them. Yep. So um, no, nah, I went on a footy trip, to be honest. It was kind of like a little mini Bucks. Uh, we went to Thailand for footy trip. So yeah. Uh, that was good, but yeah, no, a few beers with the mates. Mate, don't mind that. Like, I, I don't care if I sound like a pussy to everyone out there, but I love a Bucks. But when they're back to back, and then you got the wedding a couple weeks later, I mean, the Bucks can really ruin your liver. Like, you just, oh yeah, it's it's like a footy trip for a day, and yeah, they're great, yeah. they're fantastic. But um, if you have a real crack at the wedding, that's just as fun as well. So yeah, I don't mind just a yeah. little spell on the Bucks. Off season, as you know, off season's big enough as it is. So I didn't yep. get a Bucks party in there to nah. to make things worse. Nah, yeah. you didn't. Nah, especially when you got back to back weddings as well. I yeah, feel like we're that age now there's a lot of weddings yeah when you get yeah. to 30 or like around that year like like i'm 20 how old are you now i'm 29 29 yeah. as well yep. so we're 30 this year mm. um it's they just start stacking up in covid they just banked up banked up yeah so there's a lot coming a lot being but yeah mm. Ah, brilliant. And what about the wedding? Like best on, I know the meatball was up there with the, uh, with the bleach blonde hair. He was on fire, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He was on fire. Um, oh, I'm trying to think best ons in that. My Dance. stepsisters were uh, into into the free piss pretty heavily for a bit there. That, <laughs> they were going hard early um, during speeches. They were yelling out and stuff. So, yep. um, but yeah, all the boys were good. It was it was bloody awesome time up there. Um, destination wedding was good. Um, wow. Everyone's happy. Everyone's up and about. The the um because it's New South Wales and Queensland border, and there's a time difference. So one bus was picking up Queensland. One bus was picking up New South Wales. And for some stupid reason, we decided to have our wedding pretty much smack on the border. So there was all this um, anxiety and nervousness, like, is it Queensland time or New South Wales time? And my <laughs> fucking manager missed the bus. 
<laughs> Big Cole missed the bus. So he's on, he was on the wrong time. A few people missed the bus and stuff. So oh, racing no. to get taxis and Ubers up there and getting time. But everyone made it in time for the reception, which that was amazing. That is gold. Big Cole yeah. Young. Is he your- Big um, Cole Young, oh, yeah, I love yeah. him. I love he's him. a ripper, yeah. His bathtub photo is still my favourite photo. Oh, like he's I, gone around season two now. He's yeah, yeah. He thinks he's a celebrity. Yeah, yeah, he is, mate. He's yeah. Ari Gold. We yeah. know that. That's his, yeah. We know he loves yeah. Ari. He wants to be Ari. They should just do a show does. on just him. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, he's a good man. Obviously, I was managed by Paul Connors, but yeah, he, he's uh, he's he's a character. Yeah, he's a weapon. He would have been on fire. Man, yeah. yeah, no, he's a great man. And so everyone got to the wedding on time. Everyone got there for the reception on time, which is good. Yep. So yeah, all ran very smoothly. Ah, uh, that's brilliant, mate. That's brilliant. And Taylor Broad, was there any chat about Taylor Demir? Like I, I always see um, when people's part, like you know, the, the the wives they they change the last name traditionally, but there's always yeah. some that don't. Did you just have that conversation? No, nah, she was straight for it. Yeah, straight, yeah, into it. straight into it, which is good. So, and it sounds all right. Taylor Broad doesn't sound too weird or anything. So, no, nah, it's good. Nah, she was awesome straight into it. So, yeah, yeah love yeah. it. No, nah, it does sound well. I was just, I was just, I wanted to ask that. I wonder if there was. I doubt it. Well, these days, there's a lot of a lot of names not changing or keeping the female's name and that. So mm. it is getting very, very common. It is. It is. Yeah. Everyone's stuff to you know mix it up a little bit and mate some great news you got a baby on the way as well congratulations yeah, little baby girl so that's oh, a girl uh, little girl yeah yeah epic. so we're uh what are we at the moment we're 21 and a half so halfway yeah born in august she's gonna be that's so epic. yeah she had a good kick on her at the moment yeah oh really so she was kicking from 19 weeks so they reckon 21 weeks you should feel it so maybe send our forward for the tigers maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant that's brilliant how excited are you to be a dad yeah I've, I've been ready to be a dad for a while now taylor's obviously a bit younger than me um but she's yeah now that it's come she's over the moon first grandchild for both our families like our parents um so yeah so they're gonna be very sport little girl she is but yeah um we're ready yeah we, we can't wait we just wanted to come now to be honest yeah, yeah. that's great yeah. a lot of everyone's having kids everyone's starting to um yeah. pop them out i'm sitting here i'm still single i'm going what am i doing mate? <laughs> <laughs> no, your time will come mate don't no, worry no, 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 don't worry there's a lot of uh you lose a lot of sleep when you have a baby you're prepared for all that with yeah. training have you spoke to a few of the boys at the club i have a little bit we had um a few little hiccups along the way with the first trimester and stuff and Taylor's pregnant first trimester is pretty rough so waking up in the middle of the night and um you know you you can't help them to be honest yeah. but you've got to you know do the right thing get up with them so a couple of mornings there we've got get up at 3 a.m what do you want no two minute noodles so make two minute noodles 30 seconds later i want a zupa duper i'm like <laughs> fucking two minute noodles and a zupa duper so <laughs> they do some weird shit when they're pregnant hormones and all that stuff and cravings but um so i had a little bit of practice through the first trimester of getting up early but um that's great yeah i'm ready for it anyway oh, that's awesome i'm looking forward to it you'll be a girl dad it's awesome um mate that's great well yeah looking forward to that august so that's literally your due date yeah yeah middle of august yeah so busy before. final series if he's all right in the uh mix yeah of it as i know well. thank god so it wasn't planned obviously the pregnant but um yeah just pop it out before finals and then uh yeah. off we go to finals and then off season with the bub so it's kind of worked out really well won't yeah. be too much yeah. carry on this off season this no. spring carnival i wouldn't have thought spring carnival and that's it that's my only leeway i've got let's talk yeah. spring carnival um you've got some you've got how many horses have you do you own uh, I got about five now. Yes, yeah, so you got a few yep. in the paddock. Yeah, not yep. paddock in the stable, yep. I should say. Yeah. How well, long have you? A couple in the paddock. Yeah. Do you yeah, at the moment? Yeah. 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 So We've, we'll talk about. Uh, I mean, I know a couple of back one the other week, but the other one uh, you got the Melbourne Cup favourite, don't you? Two thousand and twenty-three Melbourne Cup favourite still. Yeah, I think it might be second favourite now after it went down uh, the other week in the Roy Higgins. But yeah, yep, it's up there anyway, which is good. What's the name of the horse again? Solcom. Yeah. Yep. So international horse from Europe. Um, came over, won the Queen's Cup last year. Which we were there for that, and that one was well. Oh yeah, one well, one good. You gave good. me the tip that day. I was yeah. telling everyone, and I'm like, "Dude, you didn't tell me it was that good." <laughs> yeah, we, were, we were watching it race, and then they got one owner on our right. Can't they run? No, nah, can't win. Needed pace on the race. Pace was slow. Then about halfway, got another owner, big owner on my left. Going, oh, their sections are going quick now. They picked it up here. And we're thinking, fuck, we don't, I got nothing. I don't know anything about horses. So I just buy them. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, which one's right? We winning or we a chance? And then, yeah, as it, you could watch it come around and it was flying home. It was a good win. It must be a but, great um, feeling when you see it just striding on oh, the Flemington straight. It's one of the best, honestly, one of the best days of my life. Like up there with probably the 19 granny even. Oh, like, really? Yeah, it was just, I know it's hard to replicate that feeling and um, it's the closest feeling you get to a granny. Wow. Uh, it was awesome, yeah. And then it's a stayer. So the races like that in Australia are so hard to come by. So it's been running in short races where it's just out of its depth, but just needs it. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, last week, the Roy Higgins was pretty close to its depth um, distance. Yeah. Came second, flew home late. Who beat um, it in that race? Gold Man. Yeah. yeah good horse. Which is now favorite, but was gassed at the 2600, held on, good run, but I think the 3200, um, that'll separate a few. Any feedback so. on that one? Like, why do you feel like it was gassed? Uh, the winner. 
No, your whole. Oh, no, ours wasn't. We were flying. Oh, you were flying. Yeah, we were flying. Yeah, yeah. Another 50, 100 metres. We, oh, we so you got just need a bit more distance. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we're 3,200. It'll eat it up. Yeah. Which so is happy with the run. Big yeah, time. Very happy. Yeah. Stoked. How do you yeah. enter the. Is it, is it already entered into the Melbourne Cup? Was it to earn it now? No. Yeah. So we, that was the first ticket into the Cup, the Roy I Higgins. that. Yeah. So that was in. So that horse Goldman's in now. That's why Goldman's favourite. Um, but I, it'll still make it, I think. Yeah. Even if we don't win a race, we need to. I think connections and stuff will make it happen. Yeah, the, it is it the Lexus or I don't know if the Lexus is that it's the sponsor probably, but there's always a race that, just the week before. Yeah, there's a few popping up. Well, the um, Saturday before maybe it's is it stakes? Is stakes day the week Caulfield after? Caulfield gets so it in. Derby that's before. Day. Yeah, Caulfield gets in. That's over twenty four hundred. Yep. I think that'll get you in. Geelong um, Cup gets you in as well. Geelong Cup will get you in. That's yeah. uh, that's higher than that, which is good. Yeah, so yeah, twenty six hundred so under is no good for yeah. Solcom. Yeah. Ah, so it needs to the long distance needs race. To, uh, needs probably 3,000. Mate, how exciting is that? You think that you, you know, had the thrill of last time. Imagine like, oh. even if it is fifth favourite, who cares? You're in the race, but you know it can win. It's been favourite for the last, you know, eight months or whatever. Um, and, <laughs> and like, who else, yeah. who else do you part on it with? We got Baker, Lynch, Rewalt, Graham, Short. Uh, and that's it. That is yeah. a good crew of so lads. So we, we own about its toenail. <laughs> yeah, that's all that matters. Man. Yeah, but we owe something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You just got to be in it to win it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, it's it's such an effort to get the horse to the actual race itself, um, let alone competing in it. Yeah. So if we can just get their race day and be in it and run, that's like I'm wrapped with that. Like, to have a horse in the Melbourne Cup would just be unbelievable. Yeah, yeah you only – you know, like when you're having a punt on the um, horses and you see one get pulled at the barriers, you can only think, oh, imagine owning that horse. The, oh, yeah. The amount of work that goes into it, the trainers, and then yeah. all of a sudden, oh, scratched at the barriers. Like, oh. that'd be a nightmare, wouldn't Heartbreaking. it? Heartbreaking, yeah. I, I don't reckon you get paid there. At least if you if you just run out the race, just let it out the <laughs> barrier maybe and then just <laughs> yeah, yeah. walk it around, get, you get so some money. So day, you'd be really yeah. anxious, wouldn't you? Like, oh, God, yeah. yeah I'd like be nervous in the granny for sure. Oh, yeah, because yeah. it's out of your control. So yeah, when you're yeah. playing footy, you got the – you got, it's it's in your control, so you're not as nervous. You know what you got to do. You've done it before. Yeah, with yeah. this, you just got to sit back and watch it. Oh yeah, it'd be very nerve wracking, but yeah, can't wait. Oh, well, not only that, because of all you boys and all great lads, like everyone's going to be jumping on. Like yeah. it's going to be like the the Richmond boys horse. And- well, that's all. Like it's getting a bit of traction now, and like well, there's these articles that we own and that. And we we kind of feel bad because, like I said before, we, we got the toenail this thing. <laughs> yeah. You got some bloke who yeah. spent half a million to get <laughs> a percentage, and he's just not in. So, um, but no, it's, it's it is awesome. The connection group, Aussie Kahir and um, John. And you and that they're awesome, yeah. And they're letting us in every time a horse comes up, they always send a message out. That's good. Do you want in, boys? Um, yeah, so it's good. No, That's really good it. syndicate, really good bunch of blokes. I was gonna say, yeah. how'd they find Solcom? Aussie, Aussie's mad, like he's a guru, he's right into it. Um, he looks everywhere around the world. Um, and then yeah, he's very successful, so um, he finds them, buys them, wants the best wants to be the best, and yeah, he's a good, very good at his job. Yeah, that's yeah, weird. yeah. That's yep. weird. So uh, he found it, I think it won. A very good race in Europe by about 10 lengths. Just came from absolutely nowhere and smoked him. And yep. That was its last race in Europe. Then it came over. So yeah. he's like, give us that one. Get yeah, it over that one. Yeah, yep. And then when he just messaged you boys, hey boys, you want to get a little horse on your video if you're yep. interested? And you go in as a syndicate? Yep. So yeah, we got, we call the Punt uh, punt Road Syndicate. Yep. The, so punt we, road the Punt Road Syndicate? Punt Road Syndicate. That's yeah, a yeah, yeah, so it's good. So we're registered in that. And then, yeah, we just we just get horses along the way. Yeah, if he says, do you want in, do you not want in or whatever? And yeah. Yep. And then uh, for anyone out there, like a pun run city, do you just have like a monthly fee that you have to pay or just as horses are winning, it just pays itself? No, there's definitely fees. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't, do not get into the game if you want to make money. That's what I say. Oh, really? Yeah. Even you if you got the Melbourne Cup favourite? Well, yeah, because it hasn't really won yet. Like it won the Queen's Cup, which is good payout. So it's probably paid for its fees there, definitely. But um, to buy into the horse was a bit of money. Yeah. Yeah. It's a hobby. It's a bit of fun. Um, yeah. If it wins the Melbourne Cup, we'll definitely be making money. But yeah. Mm. I know uh, our mate Cammy Manuel with uh, Snap Dancer, the boys, all yeah, they yep. just cleaned up. Cleaned there. up, yeah. What a horse to that's get just in. Just one in a million. You get one like that, you're laughing. That's what I was saying. Yep. I mean, like, they, they, I think they were talking or well, speaking to him that they were saying uh, that we get another one. And I'm thinking, yeah. I don't think you want to get another one. I'm like, this is as good as it gets. I reckon you guys should just celebrate and stick together and just yeah. keep drink, just watching well, the replays. One of the, <laughs> one of the few of the younger blokes of the club, they're like seeing, you know, the fun we've had and the joy and that. And they're like, we want to get on them. And we were like, no, nah, we won't get on this next one. Cause you know, we've got Solcom and all this going on, fair bit going on. So they got in on this horse, paid all this money for it or whatever. The poor bastard was in the pool, had a heart attack, drowned the poor thing. And that was their first horse. And they're thinking, what a start. What a start to this. So the poor thing, like it's sad, tragic. Um, 
the way it is. So yeah, so not a good start for those boys. <laughs> oh, I'm not laughing at the scenario. I'm laughing at the boys. They're probably thinking Melbourne Cup and they've yeah. got the they've they've copped the drowning. That well, is they've that watched is... us boys. Oh, successful. How good's this horse yeah. racing industry? The poor it's bastards. like anything. You always talk about the other highs and then it's like, you know, as you as you just alluded to it, there's that there's a lot of like there's a lot of lows and hard work, boys. Yeah, yeah. But when you're young and naive, uh it, it doesn't matter. You're like, I want in. Yeah, and they, they always sell you the dream. Yeah, you know, this thing's the next biggest thing and all this stuff. Oh, it's it's. It, I mean, you still saw thunderstruck not long ago. Like so yeah. sad. Like just minor things. Like yeah. it's just it's shocking. It is. They're such beautiful animals. Like they're unbelievable. Mm. Um, so to see them go down like that, not in their own choice, they should all be able to retire, go to a paddock, and live a happy life. But yeah, poor thunderstruck, sad. Yeah, yeah. terrible. I, used to, I grew up with uh, my uncle had harness like like using the harness game. He used to love it. So he used to leave all the retired horses at ours. Yeah. And, yeah, so we've had horses growing up. Mr. Feed them, give them a couple of apples. Me and them would share them. I think I've got the same size teeth. <laughs> but they're great animals, aren't they? Beautiful. Awesome. Just Beautiful cruise animals, around, yeah. eat the grass. Yeah. Um, but thoroughbreds, like they're just a they're different breed. Yeah, yeah, they're real. Yeah, they're beasts. Absolute beasts. A bit like you back in the day, mate, running oh, down the wing. Mate, I, 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 I think I got you drafted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I oh, yeah, we, we, that. yeah, I reckon I got you drafted. Thanks, Tommy yeah, Sheridan. Yeah, yeah. The people wouldn't realise that, do they? Like, I remember um, when you were at Swanee, he's like, uh, just running around with you and I'm like fuck this bloke's so good like I just couldn't get off you and then you know you fast forward you're living with Brando you get drafted and know everything about you Brando's like what's he like you know yeah. like, he's a gun he's a good fella and then uh, and then now you know you've won flags you're still playing it's just like the whole thing it's when you look back it's crazy yeah. crazy isn't it yeah it's been yeah a lot of setbacks a lot of you're not good enough Along especially the way, you, but like, yeah, especially for you. Yeah. What, 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 like, what would be if, like? We don't talk too much footy. I'm sure you've told your story before, but like when you've done it tough, like how old were you when you got picked up? 22. So 22. Yep. So you're pretty much four years being knocked back, rejected, told not good enough. Mm. What did they yep. say to you, by the way, when you weren't getting picked up? Uh, well, it started like at 16s, like tack, well, you call it tack cup here, don't yeah. you? Yeah. So we call it Colts. So waffle, yeah. Yeah. So I remember back like in 16s. Everyone went in the room and the coach calls out your name and you leave the room, you, you, you're in this, like you're in the team for the year. So yeah, Tommy Sheridan, off you go, blah, 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 off you go, off you go. Starts getting thinner and thinner and thinner and you're sitting there going, fucking hell, missed I hope out. my name comes out. And then there was like maybe six of us left in the room and they said, oh, you blokes missed out, try again next year. And of course you walk out that door, the other 40 blokes are standing there wanting to see who didn't make it. So you're walking out. Like it's just, yeah, shocking system way to do it. Yeah. You that look was, back, yeah. You look yeah. back and that's almost what makes you, isn't it? Like you yeah. look at that and go that dark moment of almost, you, you kind of, you feel embarrassed, don't oh, you? God, yeah, you're embarrassed. hundred percent. You've got all some, these kids looking at you like your mates and that, but then it, it at the time it's tougher than it feels you. And then the same thing happened. 18s, um, state 18s, yep. um, got picked, but back then you didn't have to play everyone. So I never played a game in state 18s. Um, and then they were just like, yeah, just bad kick, not good enough. Um, that's why I didn't get a game in the thing. And then, yeah, 18 was pretty close to getting drafted. Probably had maybe six clubs look at me. Um, was pretty, yeah, a few saying like, yeah, keen, rookie, all this stuff, nut. And then 19, um, then had to go play reserves because I wasn't good enough for the league team in the waffle. So no that's one really. 20s. Yeah, yeah. We had a pretty strong side. Couldn't get a game in the league for when I was 19 years of age. And then, so then could just kind of went off the radar a bit and then, 2021, 20, similar things. And then I pretty much went to quit Waffle because they wouldn't give me a game. Long story, was shit going on. They wouldn't play me. And um, I said, oh, oh, fuck this, I'm going. I'm going to go play country for this team called Harvey and that. And then wow. um, went on footy trips. Boys convinced me like, nah, stick it out. And the coach said, I promise I'll play every game this year. Um, and then I said, well, if I'm, yeah, if, if I'm good enough, I want to be in the side. I feel like my form has been good enough. And then he played me every single game that year. And then, yeah, got drafted. Yeah, so That's what could have been. And, uh, man. Yeah, it's wild. Like just, yeah, so many knockbacks and all this stuff. And then, but yeah, like you said before, I can, like everyone says it, but I wouldn't have it any other way now. Nah. Um, and that's why I'm coming on 30 next week. But um, yeah, no signs of slowing down. I missed out on four years. So I want those four years back. 100%, so, mate. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And you wonder, I was speaking to Mick Barlow as well. He did it the hard way. You almost wonder like, if it, you know, you, you do get those four years of being a young, you know, like a, like a young adult, you know, eight, 18 to 22, you, you get, yeah, the life experiences, yeah, yeah. you're probably, like we just had Mal, my old manager on, we're talking about managing money and, and, and little things like fuck, just doing stupid, like parking fines, they would do it for me. They're literally wiping your ass for you because yeah. you just, you got a yeah. management group and you're like, oh, I'll just, but you would have, you know, you're going, you might've went to, like you would have been a dude, tradie when you, when, when you, what were we doing when you're 18? Yeah. So I moved, I had to move down away from home 
down to the city with me and a few mates had a house there, um, went to school and we just lived. So we obviously paying our own bills and that. Yeah. So you're living um, like an adult yeah, at 18, so 19, adult, growing up. Grocery shopping, all this stuff. Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and you're then I was like a plumber. A- so I was apprentice wages then after school. Oh, plumber. Plumber, yeah. So shocking wages, um, playing waffle for 120 bucks a game. Um, so yeah, low money. So you learn a lot of things along the way. Um, and then when the time comes now, like we got some of these young young blokes that come through the system and they complain about all these little things. And I'm like, fuck, if you blokes go back. Yeah. And that's why I rate the Melbourne Storm. I love what they do. They bring them in and then they, um, they train. So they- train and then after training they'll go on a job site and be a tradie or in the mornings they'll start at six on the job site finish at 12 then they'll come into the storm do their session do their weights probably leave there at seven o'clock at night and they do that for whole two weeks and then they're allowed to join the group yeah that's that's the first thing they do and so then these kids that are coming through they see the real world and then they have a bit of gratitude for fuck well I'm not given oh, I don't want to go back to that yeah. yeah yeah and that's kind of what I was I, I don't want to go back to plumbing this is too good yeah like I'm getting a massage a week yeah I've got food cooked for me like how good's this this is unbelievable so and that's um, exactly what yeah um and you can see why Richmond's such a great club it's got great people like you in there and and the leadership you can give young guys is mm-hmm. elite because you know as I said some players like people can't you know people can't deliver that message to these 18 19 20 21 year old like, cause they've never, they've never experienced it, you know, yeah, like yeah. Dion, we love him, but like, um, the meatball, he wouldn't be able to deliver this message because he's, he's only been playing footy since yeah, yeah. 18. Since school. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Much comes out of school and they roll yeah. into footy. So he hasn't yeah, had yeah. that taste of the real mm. world as we like to call it, where you're like, you're doing, you're working, you got a dream, you're getting rejected, you know, yeah, four yeah. years and then you finally get there. And then not only that, you got two years on a minimum wage, essentially as a mature, and then you start getting paid probably what you're, you're worth. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And probably not, you know, you're probably still under. It's just the way it is. Uh, it's it's pretty cool, man. Yeah, no, it's good. Like it's yeah, it's been awesome. And then what all the success that's come along oh. through the way has just been like right time, right place. Um, just yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. You walk. When was your first flag? What year was that? Your second year? S- my second yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. So I don't happened quick, didn't it? Yeah, I was third last pick in the draft. So I don't know what would have happened. Rookie wise, because the rookie was at best, and I think Richmond were going to pass on pick sixty seven, and then I don't know why they didn't, but they ended up taking me, and that was the third last. Ever pick asked the draft. them? No, I have. I should do. Should yeah, ask yeah, yeah. Uh, someone told me that they got wind that another club was taking me early in the rookie, and they had a, they had like a later rookie pick that they were going to use on me. Yeah, and then um, they just thought, fuck it, we'll just take him now. Yeah, take him now. Why not? What's to lose? Um, and then yeah, third last pick. So yeah, while well, what could have been. Yeah, who the other club was or whatever, hey, but it's just so lucky, the right time, right place, and then yeah. You got any advice for those that like keep getting rejected at 18, 19, 20, 21? Like, is what would your advice be to them? Just stick it out. Yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, um, I probably partied a little bit too hard when I was eighteen, and um, so did everyone though. Yeah, that's exactly right, and and maybe that was a knock on me, a bit wild and all that stuff. But um, it's out of my system now. I'd rather have do that than come into an AFL system, be a dickhead get booted out after two years. Um, but yeah, my, my advice would be just stick it out. Um, they're always watching. Yeah. And the, I don't know if the drafts are getting weaker, but mature age and um, other older picks are getting more common. So I don't know if that's because the drafts are getting weaker or maybe they just want more experience, but you look everywhere now they're happening. Kane Lambert was 24 when he got drafted. Um, Stuart from Geelong, like they picked him out of the local league down in Geelong. So they're always watching. They're everywhere. So yeah. um, just stick out it and then, and yeah, you'll be right. Yeah, it's great advice. Yeah. Stick to it. And yeah, yeah, and it's amazing, those sliding doors. You go to Harvey, you might not be where yeah. you are now. Like that, 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 that footy trip. That footy trip saved you. Yeah, yeah. Who was the one bloke that told yeah. you to stay? Was there a bloke you can remember from oh, the, the Swannies? The skipper was always on there telling Ames. He's I remember mad him. As a, he, he didn't remember. Yeah. Yeah, he played, yeah. I remember I heard him once and he was like, <laughs> ah, he's on the ground. He's that loud and he's, he's directing loud. from full back. And yeah. he's, he, you know, you, you'd love him in your team. But geez, we used to love playing him. He's mad <laughs> as a cut snake telling his. But yeah, I, just, I don't know. They just made me, made me want to stay. And the coach convinced me I'd play every game. And um, yeah, just. Just wild that it came to this. Oh, it's yeah. brilliant, mate. Uh, it's a great story. I didn't even have it on the run sheet. I just never really asked you. Um, no one's really ever asked me my footy story. Like, oh, never, really? Have you never I've really never told it? A, I've yeah. never done a podcast, really. I did one, but it was golf, I think. And yeah. no one's really asked my story. And a few people at the club have heard it. Like, um, 
and then I've told them and they've gone, shit, never knew that. But um, It's so yeah. good to share your story. Yeah, I, yeah. I think you get so much out of it. Everyone's story is different. That's exactly right. Everyone's different. Everyone's got a different path. So. Well, let's stick to it if you haven't told it. What was the motivating factor to stick at it? Like you, there's always a, a drive internally. Like I remember when I was growing up, there's always I wanted to get like drafted was the thing, right? But you've been like, I never had the rejection at, I got more rejection in AFL. You know, you're not yeah, good yeah. enough to play this week, that stuff and fighting through that. Whereas um, you've had all the rejection of, no, nah, you're not good enough for this squad. You're not mm. good. Your, your, your kick's not good enough as you quoted before. Uh, and then you get picked up and then it starts to turn. Like, how do you fight the rejection of what you're looking up to is probably your coaches and all these leaders of, you know, you know all these squads. Yeah. Who do you turn to? Is it, is it like family or how do you stick at it? Like, well, remember, I love, loved my waffle club, love Swanee's local boy. Um, grew up oh, when I was probably 16 onwards, grew up around the Oval all the time. And I just thought, fuck it, I, I want to be captain of Swanee's one day. I want to get my name on the locker, play a couple of hundred games of waffle footy. Like, that was what my goal became. And I thought AFL has gone. It is what it is. I had a crack at it. And then just um, enjoyed playing. And then Blaine Bokehurst, I don't know if you remember yeah. him. He went top 20 as a 21-year-old uh, in the draft, national draft to Carlton. And that was like unheard of back back then. And I thought, shit. And we're real, really close, me and Blaine. I thought, fuck, if he, if he can do it, surely I can get a rookie spot. Like, surely I can do it. So that was a huge motivating factor for me. I went from giving up on AFL and just wanting to be a good waffle player to Blaine getting drafted top 20 and thinking, I can I can have a go at this. I can, like, get a rookie draft. And then, um, yeah, just stuck at it. Really had a good season. Tried my hard ass, uh, ass out. And then Colin came around to me probably halfway through the season, which is my manager now, and said, I reckon we've got something to work with here. Let's have a crack at it. I reckon that um, would have – that that I remember like that that moment of a manager backing you in when you go oh hang on mm, yeah someone's yeah. someone's backing me in here well Colin I had a manager at eighteen and he was dog shit yeah <laughs> he got his um <laughs> he got his card taken off him oh right. yeah yeah so, so he was stitched up early yeah days. I got stitched up real early days fuck knows what he was saying to clubs or how that worked yeah then at nineteen Colin said what has happened to you I feel bad I'll take you on for free um and we'll have a crack and so we had a crack but I was playing Resi's footy. For that whole season so it was hard to show myself out there and show um, my worth and then at the end of the season Colin and I shook hands and I just said mate thanks for having a go at me um, it didn't work out but it is what it is see you later type thing um, and then yeah that was what's that that was 19 so then 2021 20, with nothing and then he calls me um, halfway through when I was 2022 20, he calls me halfway through the season says hey mate Colin here again Let's have another go at this. So, must have heard on the whispers that everyone's yeah, yeah. interested. So, so um, what year was that? I know everyone out there might be getting confused. We're talking about your age, not age, the year. Years, yeah. So, so what I got year drafted was... at end of 2015. 2015, you got drafted. Yep. So halfway through 2015, Colin approached me. And then obviously it was at 2014, 2013. So like yep. 2012 maybe was when he had a crack at me. And it didn't didn't work out. And then he's come back around halfway through 2015 and said, It's awesome. I reckon we can do this. I've heard a few whispers. There's something out there. Let's have a real red hot crack at it. Who was the yeah. young fella um, that was playing at Swanee's? He he ended up getting drafted, but I think he he didn't last too long. And uh, Oh, Dale Garlett. That's the one. Yeah. Most talented football. Wasn't I've he a star? Because he yeah. played, I, I'd imagine blokes like him would have helped you as well. Because uh, they would have, you know, a lot of recruiters are watching him yeah. and they would have said, oh, who's yeah. this Nathan Broad bloke as well? We had a pretty stacked team, which was Lockie good. Lockie Neal was like, playing pretty. Canelio. Lockie well, Neal was down there. Lockie Neal was there first, like before he got AFL yeah, games. Yeah. The first two years he was playing. It was Swannies. Swannies. Canelio was at Swannies. Cogs the early days, yeah. Um, and then we had like a guy called Murray Newman, who was a um, freak Indigenous player. Dale Garlett, who was a freak. Uh, Roy Lobb was down there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this was early days. Sonny Colts Walters days. got kicked back from, yeah. I remember he got told, go back to Waffle for like 12 weeks yeah. and he come back like he was, they said, yeah. you're too fat, you're out of shape and this is your last, like this is your last chance and he's yeah. got a great story. We'll tell that one day um, if he comes on. But he, he man, I'll never forget because he was, that was my first year and I, yeah. and I was like, I remember like, you know, you mates with all the blokes on your list, but when we played him, he shook me hand, first contest, bang, yeah. like, it was like he wanted to take the, just take everyone's head off and he was lean and he was dominating. Good boxer, yes. Yeah, so oh, yeah. Yeah, hard yeah as can nails. absolutely throw him. When did it, like, when did it kind of sink in that you're like, I'm going to get drafted? Well, we're only going back here because I didn't know you hadn't told the story, but you spoke about, you know, maybe getting rookied or drafted last pick, but come two weeks out of the draft, like how was the, how are the emotions? Probably still like it's not going to happen probably because there's no like you got a lot of people talking, but that happened to me when I was 18 as well. Yeah. Um, so it was a very similar situation, same amount of clubs type thing. So 
Um, but no one giving me real clarity of like, we're going to do it. So I was probably just like, if it happens, it happens type mentality. Um, and then, yeah, just went to the casino that night. My parents are separated. So separated family. We just went there and just sat there to watch, just not to get drafted. Just thought maybe it would happen, but let's just see what oh, happens. Awesome. And then, uh, we were walking off. This is no word of a lie. Oh, really? I think there's only three clubs left that hadn't passed and Richmond had spoken to me briefly. And then I just went, oh, we, we'll leave. And then Nathan Broad, we've turned around we're like, fuck off. No way. That's yeah, so good. Yeah, yeah, it was wild. Do yeah. you still bring back, like, like that must have been an emotional yeah. moment. Well, another wild story, actually. Um, I went to Bali with two of my mates before the draft, probably uh, maybe a month before the draft, and a volcano erupted and the ash cloud couldn't fly out of there. So we, was, we were there for probably, probably 10 days to two weeks, couldn't get out of there after what we were meant to be there. And we're trying to fly out, nah, 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 nah. And I had my phone, I'm in Richmond, is calling one to a meeting and I'm like, I'm stuck in Bali. And I literally landed, went straight to um, Richmond's hotel room. They were flying back to Melbourne, had a quick five minute, hey, hey, going, yep, this is it, blah, blah, blah. And that was it, done. I swear, no word of a lie. Yeah, it was just- So that, if there had been one more delay, you might not have had yeah, that yeah. meeting. Who knows? Yeah, knows. Who knows what would have happened, but yeah. Wow. So um, it was a wild year. Yeah, it was just crazy. It yeah. is so wild. The ups and downs of, oh, of yeah. AFL and obviously trying to get in the system. Half of it's yeah. just trying to get in the system. Once you're in yeah. there, the environment allows you to be the best version of yourself and you exactly buy in right. and yeah. there's so much more opportunity. you got the elite of elite. Mm. Oh, mate, that's awesome. Yeah, no, it was good. Yeah. Did, you just get, did you get blind at the crowd? You, you would have been partying at Crown that night, surely. Uh, it's one of the best. I reckon being drafted is one of the – Drafted first game, and I'd imagine winning a flag. They're like the, they're just amazing moments yeah, for they're, family. They're feelings you can't, you can't replicate or find. Um, yeah, the old man likes having a beer, so I think we, <laughs> we settled in for a few at the Crown, which that's is awesome. Epic. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so good. That's so good because you do hear heartbreak. You know, you have those people yeah. that have the little party and they don't get their name out, and ah, oh, it's brilliant, yeah. mate. And they're the ones where you wish they had like cameras on, which you couldn't organise because yeah, you'd yeah. say no. But they're the, they're the like moments where if you had capture a that moment, capture yeah. that moment. Yep. That'd be pretty elite. Yeah, you're awesome, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's special. I remember playing on you like you, you you're very, no one realizes how strong you are. We're going to go through your bench press in a minute. <laughs> you run all day, quick, you play tall, play small, a lot to like. You can see why you've had such a great career. Have you always been real athletic? Uh, athletic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Never, never strong or anything. Always. Really? Oh, just like a lean muscle, you know. We didn't do weights at waffle level. Um, that wasn't, <laughs> wasn't really required. <laughs> um, so you know, you know, the West best, they, yep. it's big ovals, a lot of running. Oh, so mate, it's massive. Um, having a bit of size on is probably not a great thing anyway over there. So, um, always just been lean and skinny. Like as a kid growing up, just, yeah, nothing on me. Yeah. Well, you're strong as you're very strong. Like give everyone insight. What would you bench press? <laughs> Cause I, I can't believe, like, as you said, you're pretty lean, but yep. like strong. What do you bench press? Uh, we did one thirty five. A couple of years ago for one. That's so much. One twenty five for three. Yeah. That for three yeah. reps, by the way. So anyone out there, that's three reps. That's that's a mm. lot, man. I got I don't see, you don't, I reckon I saw one bloke do 145, but it was a beast at bench press. Like that yeah. was his thing. Like, you know, you, that <laughs> who else is a beast at Richmond? Or you got, uh, are, you, are you right up there? Yeah, I'm equal, equal with Robbie Tarrant um, at the, the moment. But Rand, is, Rancy was always an animal. Rancy was a beast. He was like one, he was probably 130 for three. Yep. So, but you're like, yeah. well, how tall are you? One one ninety three. How yeah. tall would Rancy be? Probably same. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He looked. He looked. Yeah. But he looked bigger. He looked bigger. He was a tank. He was. Yeah. A, he's a specimen, Rancy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. man. One thirty yeah. or one twenty. Whatever. It was one thirty five for three. That's yeah. yeah. One twenty for th one twenty five for three. Yeah. Yeah. How's the meatball go? Not great. <laughs> Not great. He looks as strong as that. <laughs> shit house. <laughs> Absolutely shit house. He, um, no, nah, he's all through the hips and the core, old old meatball, but um, the uppers, yeah, shit house. All look, all show no good. I've heard Dusty's actually not that strong on the bench press, but he's like the strongest on the field. Is there any truth to that? D Dusty can't do weights because he just gets he just gets too big. Like oh, he's, he's a beast. Like, he's like Toby. Yeah, yeah. Toby they, doesn't really those touch weights. come along every now and again. Nick Vlosten's the same. You put too much weights into them and they won't be able to run out. That is it's crazy, yeah. isn't it? How they, yeah. I'm the opposite, mate. I oh, do more mate. like, I get skinnier. Look, like, yeah, the more sessions I do, I still don't put any yeah, muscle on. I'm the exact on. same, mate. Eat carbs, eat carbs, smash weights. And then these blokes say, just look at a weight and yeah, get strong. So. I reckon later in life, that'll be an issue, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. not a bad problem now. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I wanted to run that through you because I just know that you're a beast in the gym and I was wondering. So that's funny. You're just kind of naturally gifted there. 
Um, let's talk about golf. I want to start with you, boys. So we don't know the result of the Masters. We did a live show, um, me, you, teared up, and um, the Q-Stick and Dommy. I've gone with Zalatoris, mate. You boys are telling me it's a great pick. As soon as it finished, you're all like, oh, his back's cooked. What do you know? He's withdrawn from the competition after one one strike, hasn't he? Yeah, well, when you when you said it, us three looked at each other a bit. Go, that's a bold prediction, Tommy. Oh, well, he's been getting best around. Best. He's always <laughs> feeling good. Now it's all over the internet. I look like an absolute his clown. Back's, his back's fucked, yeah. He's just, um, I think he needed it similar um today you know had to change his swing to be able to prolong his career but um yeah pulled out didn't even didn't even have one swing so um yeah, yeah it's hopefully it's who was your ruffy i can't remember who your ruffy was i think Min i went Wu. Lee just because he's an aussie yeah. I, but i did put um personally i put money on day and and yeah. uh and zalatoris to get my yeah. money back i think so yeah. um hopefully yeah day gets it done mm. but it's, well, as we're recording this podcast we're only day one in the master so we'll just talk about that another time but mate yeah I just wanted to bring that up you boys have rolled me there classic. I feel like you were <laughs> winking at me when I wasn't looking I was, I was looking at Dolly and Dolly's pissing himself <laughs> and, he's, and he's going oh great selection yeah, great yeah. selection <laughs> Um, let's talk footy now just quickly, but Emma Murray at the Tigers, I haven't really asked you many, we had a joke the other day, but she does so much work with you guys. Um, how would you sum up her work at the Tigers and for you individually? Um, probably groundbreaking, to be honest, early days, like, um, you know, men and all this stigma around, you know, you don't talk about your feelings. You don't, um, say these things, you keep it to yourself. Men don't cry, all this stuff, but, um, that stigma is changing and Emma Murray was real big in, not as much like the emotional side of it, the mental side of it and controlling what you can control and these other factors, you know, like the crowd and external noise. Yeah. External noise. Exactly right. Yeah. Well, how can you keep yourself in what you can control for longer? You're always going to go to that stuff, but how can you, you know, do that? And she brought that on board. Um, obviously none of us had ever heard of that before and took it on board and yeah, it worked wonders for us. It's incredible. It kind of bit of a detriment to be honest that we spoke about it because now she's hot property um she doesn't do a hell of a lot of work at the club she's travels the world works with the best of the best formula one drivers golfers tennis um so she's all around but um no she's a superstar and we're seeing that space grow and grow and grow now so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and i can only imagine what she's charging him now like oh, oh man, she would be just <laughs> yeah, she'd be making a book and here you go yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably 25k of yeah. talk oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. which yeah. is great deserves every bit of it and you yeah. guys had a lot of success when she started didn't you yeah yeah it was, it was i don't know if it's a coincidence or not but once she came on board and once we change all this mindfulness stuff and controlling your brain and all this stuff. We started winning and culture and all that stuff. So um, some could say it's a coincidence, some could say it's her, but I, I think she's been amazing. What about yeah. for everyday Joes like myself? What's one thing you can tell us all here at the Aces that we can take away with our life? And you just spoke about controlling what you can control. Is that, is it like, is there anything else that you could pass on? Um, geez, I don't know. Like a gratitude's a lot, a big one that we we try and do down at Richmond, just being grateful for what we have and um, stuff. And like I, I went to the um, children's hospital today for the Good Friday appeal and um, just seeing kids in there, like some of them have never left the hospital mm. and you just think, fuck, I'm complaining about missing a kick or, you know, this, I'm not in the team this week. And then you look at these poor kids never left the hospital when they're a year old already. Um, so yeah, it's just things like that. Just trying to be grateful for what we have and being healthy just, and all those little things, um, which you can take into your everyday life. Um, yeah, things aren't as bad as they seem. Ah, it's great, mate. It's yeah. awesome advice. You're right. We don't sit there and I mean, you, you need to be deliberate with it. Don't you need to wake yeah. up, write it down or text someone, tell them. Yeah. Uh, and you can see that it's really, you know, it, you can see why when we all hang out and you meet all the Richmond boys, they're all just lovely blokes. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. They're very yeah. outgoing, very nice guys. You can just see that why everyone loves being at the club. Yeah, um, no egos, which is the best thing. I might play footy and might play in front of 100,000 people, but at the end of the day, we're same as the bloke sitting in the grandstand, no different. It's the best thing about Richmond. There's no egos. We don't allow it. Um, we pull blokes up on it as soon as it happens. Um, yeah. Good place to be. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. We don't, yeah, you don't want that at all. Um, you've just been recently suspended. We won't talk about that. It is what it is. Um, when you're suspended, I thought this would be great to talk about what goes on at a footy club when you are suspended because people wouldn't understand how hard it is because you've got to try to get the same match simulation of workload into your body so that when you come back uh, for you, which is you get, you cop the, you know, a lengthy one, four weeks. So you've got to get that four weeks of, you know, block of work at the start of the season. So give us a little bit of an insight into the load and the management um, individually that, you know, you're going through without getting into yeah. too much details and IP, but how, yeah. how hard is it to kind of get the same kind of match simulation? Simulation. Well, my mates back home from Perth, you know, tradies, teachers, all this stuff, pretty low-key blokes and just 
not too much about footy. They're like, oh, what are you going to do? You're going to go to the Masters or you're going to come over to Perth for a week or <laughs> yeah, well, what's, your, what I mean, what's yeah. your plans now for the next four weeks? I'm going, fuck, it doesn't work like that. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's tough. You got to, I'm lucky I'm not injured. Obviously, I'm suspended. So I joined the group as usual. Um, and then, so today's Friday, the boys are on their captain's run. So do a bit of a run this morning, um, do a cross train, like an upper body circuit, which was pretty grueling. Um, that was brutal. And then tomorrow when they're playing the game before the game, um, I'll join the rehab group and yeah, get put through my paces, try and replicate the same case, same high speed as a game, but it's fuck, it's way harder Harder because in a game you got, you know, there's more people out there. There's times in the game, you got a bench and all this stuff when it's this, it's just you and the rehab coach. And then oh, fingers crossed, hopefully someone else is leaving rehab so you can do it with them. But if it's not, they'll just literally like boot a ball and like you go chase it, um, kick it, chase it, like a kid in the backyard that's got yeah, no yeah. brothers and sisters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's exactly like that. And then they might do things like that, just like heaps of ground balls, build up the lactic acid. Maybe they'll sit on top of you and keep trying to get up and just trying to replicate what would happen in a game. But it's 10 times harder than an actual game. It's Isn't brutal. it? I, and that's yeah. why I loved asking the question. I've done a fair bit of it when I was going yeah. through the calf. And the the thing that would get you is like they you're doing all these grappling and tackling and trying to get that lactic acid up. And then they yeah. make you do the sprints and all that. And um, and it's just, it's what I the best way to describe it is, AFL, like a game, it's distraction cardio in terms of like yeah. you would never think about running because you're so focused on like, you know, when you've got the ball, where to set up. Yeah, yeah, I've got the ball now. Who am I going to kick it to? Okay, I'm defending now. Where's my man? Where do I got a guard space? Yeah. You don't think about running no. 15Ks and or you whatever got, like, it is. 50 to 80,000 people with adrenaline going <laughs> yeah. through you. Like, 7.30 at punt road. There's absolutely <laughs> jack. There's no one watching. I <laughs> know. Oh, that's um, all I wanted to get. And then not only after that, you've got to go do all your weights, your gym session, yeah, and then they top you up with a bit of cardio. Are they making you do the assault bike? Yeah, I had that this morning, the oh. old assault bike. And then you got to- and you got appearances, so you got to go do all these, you know, appearances, meetings, and stuff because you're not. And then you got to go watch the AFL, then watch the AFL. So get into the club about seven thirty tomorrow and roll out of there post game. So about eight o'clock at night. So she's a big day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's great insights. What do I ask? I thought most people. I'm not sure if they did. You know, they do understand, but yeah, when you're not playing and you are fit and available from you know suspension or whatever, mm -hmm. or it's a bye week, it's a or you're coming back from a long term injury and you nearly return to play. It's just yeah, a, she's it's no probably, holiday. <laughs> she's no holiday nah, at all. She's so no yeah, holiday. just wanted to let your mates know yeah. uh, on the pod, mate. Exactly right. Um, now we've already done a bit of the beard and blade the other day, so I've got you um, a special, special little daily ritual skincare pack here, mate. Beautiful. This Thank is from you. our friends at Beard and Blade. Anyone else out there? They're the number one men's grooming company in Australia. Um, and if you want to check out their website, as always, beardandblade.com.au, you get the discount code ACES for 15% off. Mate, open that up. You, you get a fair bit in there. And I've also got, yeah, you're, you know, you've got the shaved head at the moment. So I'm not sure how you're going to use this, but you will, I know you will slick it back later in uh, spring carnival. We've got the low shine, medium hold clay pomade there. Got so a bit in there at the moment, do you, big fella? Yeah, I got a little, bit, good. I, yeah a little bit of slick back as a, oh, <laughs> yeah, very, this morning. Very slick, <laughs> Looking good. Um, we asked you the other day the same kind of question. We love to ask the boys if they trim downstairs with the, you know, the hero beard trimmer, but we did that yesterday. So I thought I'd ask you who's probably the w most well-groomed tiger. Um, you know, who's one of the boys in the locker room that's always well-groomed that you think would, you know, would be a great ambassador for beard and blade. Uh, Jaden Short, he is always shaving legs, face. You just see him in the shower, face cream. Shaves up like he's well groomed, Jaden Short. Yeah, he just yeah, right. So he's the razor, which they have there. Bit he's, of a, blade. Yeah, he's a clean shaven man, which is which is pretty ballsy. I think I'm not a clean shaven man. Um, you get the pimples and stuff pop up, but yeah. um, no, nah, he's always look, making sure he's in A1 condition short. Yeah. That is brilliant. Yeah. That is brilliant. Now my net, he's my running out of air though, so I don't know if this will come. Oh. In. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This this one might work all right, but this one might not go so good. <laughs> Mate, as you get older, you start to notice it. Just start the yeah. the old uh, the, the hairline. Yeah, 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 yeah. The old the, the, the old, <laughs> <laughs> the old yeah the old uh, big M. What do they call it? The old car park. The yeah, boys yeah. reading a little car park there. There's a few of those original. Don't worry. That's a Wearing hats on a rainy day at training. Yeah. Oh, that's when you know someone's yeah. lost their confidence. Yeah. 
when they're yeah. rocking hats and you know they've got good hair, but they're stuck. rain, r- rolling a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Not fooling anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Piss and rain. That is good. I've actually never yeah. thought about that. That's brilliant. Who's one of the blokes at the Tigers who need a bit of beard and blade uh, supply? Who's the who's the bloke that's not very well groomed that could do with a big package here from our friends? Bakes is not too bad. Cuts <laughs> his own hair. Pretty bit of rough around the edges, but keeps himself pretty respectable. Um, trying to think who's just a grub. <laughs> Grub's a great word. Right. Hey, the place, what do you call it? The Nintendo controller. Yeah. That is so funny. <laughs> up, down, up, down. <laughs> that is brilliant. I've never heard that one before. <laughs> I've only heard it because a few blokes get called it. Yeah. I uh, won't name names, but uh, yeah. But no, I don't know who needs it. There's a, there's a few blokes who are rough around the edges, but um, nothing comes to mind. Yeah, uh, that's good. The boys are in good nick. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Well, there you go. Their yeah. missus keep on them. A lot of, lot of girlfriends at the club, so they're doing a good job. Girlfriend's do, yeah. You know, Jess, Jess's missus styles him, and he, yeah, yeah. when he gave him the trimmer, he was pretty happy. I think he's got a big Amazon down there. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic, mate. Let's go back to golf. Uh, I know all you Tigers boys, and you in particular, you love it. Um, handicap at the moment? 12.1. 12.1. What's the lowest it's ever been? 12.1. <laughs> oh, so you're right there. So you're, yeah, yeah, you're grinding, yeah. grinding. Yeah, I'm grinding at the moment. I'm, yeah. One on one off at the moment, really trying to want to get the single figures before the baby comes, but um, we'll see how we go. It'd be tough to play a lot of rounds when you've got the baby, do you reckon? Yeah, I think, yeah. Yep. Unless I saw a um, clip not long ago where the baby's in the pram and then they've custom made oh, yeah, the yeah. pram with, with holes in it so you can put all your clubs so you can oh, walk. I'll the, be all for, I reckon Taylor will be all for that. <laughs> so you get me out of the house and the baby. So you walk, yeah, so you walk the baby on the course. Yeah. So it's like a little cart to, in the yeah. pram and you've got all your clubs. <laughs> 100%. She would love it. Oh, mate, I yeah. saw that. I thought that is that is elite. There's that yeah. many dads around these yeah. days. Um, who else is? Who's, who's the leader of the boys? Bakes is the best, isn't he? Uh, Raywalt technically, it's, handicap wise, is the best but doesn't play. Um, he's off 2.5, I think. That's low. Very low. Good golfer. Bakes is a gun. Yeah, Bakes hits at a mile off eight. Um, How does he hit it mile. so far being a little man, Bakes? No, he's a midget. I know. He just bombs it. He absolutely bombs it. He's got this driver, um, doesn't doesn't change. He's got this old driver and just whacks oh, it. Oh, so he's got an old driver. Old so Callaway, yeah, just absolutely whacks it. Um, Graham's good. Graham's just um, nice and smooth. Doesn't just bomb it. Just, yeah, good, good golfer. And then, um, yeah, there's a lot of blokes between 15 and 20. But the culture's building, yeah. We had no culture early days. Now we got probably 15, 16 blokes. So yeah. it's good. It's yeah. just a great way to get, as I said, you guys do that trip as well. And how's big Tommy Lynch hit him? He Lynchy's always on the course, isn't he? I think <laughs> Lynch is giving himself a um what is it? He's giving himself a um like a goal. If he's not below 20, I think, by the end of the year, he's quitting, giving oh, it up. Wow. Yeah, 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 he's giving it up, he reckons. What's so he at the moment? He's the face of Callaway, the big fella. <laughs> <laughs> he's got all the new Callaway gear, everything. <laughs> all the gear, no idea. He's, he's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got, I don't know if many people know, but Lynch's fingers are fucked. Obviously, marking the ball over the years, back spoiling it. Yeah. So he's got a couple of fused fingers. Oh, wow. Especially the old middle finger. So it's fused, can't bend it, won't oh, move. Oh, so it's like that when he's holding the stick. Yeah, so he's he's holding the club and he, it's like this big thing poking out as he's <laughs> Big bloke. <laughs> he's got this and it's just like, it just doesn't look right. But oh. if he gets onto him, he goes all right. But he's just consistency with the big fella. But it's amazing his fingers fused. When did he fuse yeah. his finger? When he was at Richmond, yeah. So maybe like 18, 19, I reckon 2018, 19. Yeah, they were just so bad from popping out and just looked all funky. So now it's just fused straight down the guts. Yeah, Can so you the, unfuse them once you're finished? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird, but it, it must just, it won't bend. Like you can, if you try and do it, you'll snap it. You'd think it'd be annoying. Like yeah. when you, you know, when you're grabbing stuff, you caught. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even, ta- even tackling though. Oh no, your hands would be open, wouldn't it? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, That's interesting. So, I've never heard of that. A few blokes, Nank's got fused fingers from being rucks. A lot of rucks have fused fingers. How are your fingers? Because I had surgery on two of my fingers. Like people, mate, they don't realize fingers. Yeah. yeah. You're neat. It's like, your, it's your craft. Like I remember, yeah. <laughs> I remember once I had surgery, this one's pretty crooked now. Like I must have done rehab properly, but mate, it's, it's once they go a bit weak, like my thumbs are cooked. Like yeah, you yeah. just, it's not yeah. as easy to mark the ball, tackle, it gets caught. Yeah, it's shocking. I've been very, touch wood, been very lucky. Yeah, just one little pinky. So you yeah, the big uh, fist all that. Yeah, <laughs> no big fingers never come out, yeah, mate. Yeah, no yeah. marks. <laughs> just black boots, dowel defender. Yeah, that's great. So, so Lynchy's yeah, giving it up if he doesn't get under twenty. Yeah, yeah, he's at twenty seven. So he's twenty seven. Want to get to work, the big fella? <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought Lynchy hits a bomb. He does. He hits a bomb, but he can just he's up and down. Yeah, up and down. Tops him, sprays him. Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, the longer you hit it, and the further it goes right or left, yeah. you're gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yep. on all these pristine courses, yep. all the boys at Q? Most of us at Q, yep, yep. Um, and then other boys just got some future golf. Um, yeah, get on the future golf while they're just 
working their way up. But yeah, yeah. Q for most of us, yeah. Ah, beautiful yeah. course. Yeah, uh, good little deck. It, very course. Good yeah. good course now. Obviously, you boys did it tough there last year. We were spoken about that. It was underwater. They've done a great job getting the kill oh, course it's back. It's actually a miracle what they've done. It was, it was fucked. Holes were completely underwater. Mm. They were catching carp like this big out of the bunker. <laughs> I'll get this photo. It's hard to kind of imagine the course being underwater now that it looks so nice. That was caught out of the pot. <laughs> so see if the camera can see that. <laughs> that is unbelievable. What is that? That'd be, that'd be above sight. I mean, carp stink, don't they? I think they're a shit fish. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're shocking, shocking fish. Man, but I think shocking. when it dried out, they were saying that they were everywhere. So they were just like, once the water had gone, they had nowhere to go. Um, then they were just dead everywhere on the course. Yeah. Um, like that size, so wow. yeah, yeah. Get down, just, get down to the river at Q there and <laughs> chuck a line in, then you know, never know what you'll get. There you go. I mean, it was the same when I was, used to get fishing on the Murray River. You just the carp, you just throw them back in. They yeah, stink, shit they, fish, yeah. shock and fish. Yeah. But Murray cod, but they used to be, they used to be heavier. So when you got a fish on the line, you think you're on. Mm. Oh, that's brilliant, mate. Now you're a huge ambassador for Ricks. I love giving yeah, you a day fresh one, use, mate. Day one, day yeah, one. That's right. People need to realise the loyalty. We wouldn't be here without blokes like you. So guess what? I'm going to reward you today. We've got the brand new. Soho Champagne Green Polarized. These haven't even been out yet. Right, they might be know. out by the time this podcast is out, but this is the first pair ever. Um, Very nice. Chuck these on, mate. So it's a new frame. I know you love your champagne. I do love my champagne. Yeah, that's mint. Look at that. What do you reckon, yeah, mate? Love oh, it. I, I like you in the champagne there. I know you wear the, the Melrose. Blonde hair. Blonde hair. Um, mate, Rick's in retirement. We always ask everyone when they finish their career. Yeah. This would be a good one for you being a WA boy now, obviously married in Melbourne. Um, but they're both originally from Perth. Yep. Uh, money's not the issue. We always say that. So we want to, we want people to let us know where they'd like to retire in their ricks in the world and why. So where was the one location that you'd love to retire? And leave them on with your answer. Who oh, are radio? Uh, in the world. Yeah, you get the world because I know you're well traveled. Everyone's been around the world. So just giving everyone oh. an eye opener to the places you've been on off season and. I've been to a lot of Asia, like Bali, Thailand. Um, never been to the states. Did a Europe trip. But that was, uh, I didn't get a European summer, so I'd love to do that one day. Um, but where I'd love to finish up, maybe, I don't know, maybe Bali for a bit. I don't mind Bali. Bali's good, nice and warm, um, nice beaches, pretty cheap. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe Bali. What spot? Oh, it's getting pretty hectic at the moment. Yeah, it's getting busier it? and busier. Yeah, yeah. These days we went Kuda and then Leggy and then Seminyak and Chenggu. Now it's even past that. So, yeah. Um, oh, Went there for my honeymoon, spent a fair bit of time down near Uluwatu, um, a lot quieter down there. And yeah, maybe down there, take the family down there when the bub's born. There you go. Uluwatu, yeah. Bali. Yeah. Reminds yeah. me of a uh, Survivor Series or something down Good there. surf. You yeah. love surfing? Shit house. Never done it. <laughs> 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 Everyone needs to think from Perth, blonde air. It must be a surfer. Mate, tell us that story about- Fucking shit's we, here to sharks <laughs> and yeah, can't surf. Mate, people don't realise how many sharks there are in mate. WA. What about the bull sharks in the river? Out the front of my joint in North Fremantle. Yeah, yeah. Like I told everyone, we used to have boat cruises on Christmas mm. and they used to throw boys in thinking, oh yeah, like you idiot. Like yeah. first year, I said, boys, there's sharks in here. Yeah. They go, no, there's not you idiots. Well, 10 years later, someone's been attacked by a bull shark. Yeah, yeah. they're everywhere. And even just sharks, getting closer and closer to shore now. Yeah. I don't know if the weather changing, they're hungrier, but mate, knee oh, deep, that's it. Mate, in and out. Well done. Um, yeah. You can take them off now. What? Tell us that story about Mick Fanning because I think this is a cracker. This is a, <laughs> this has to be told and and give it a little bit of insight about Tig because Tig loves the great man and this is this is random and quite cool. Very random, yeah. So we we played Goldie maybe before COVID anyway. So maybe 2019, 2018, we played. Um, the Goldie up there, and we had a few days off after. So Nick and I um, lost and we stayed back up in the Goldie and Nick's a big surfer. So messaged one of his mates who lives in Geelong and said, yeah, I got a mate. He said he can borrow his boards. Here's the address. Go meet him. So we rocked up at this absolute mansion. And then there was like another little house in front of it, same property, same um, owner. And we go in and meet this bloke and how you going, blah, 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 having a chat to him. And he, here's all these boards, fucking that many boards to pick from. So we get him, we, Nick goes for a surf. I just sat on the rocks and watched. And then we get back and, yeah, thanks, mate. You want a coffee or whatever? Yeah. So we sat down and had a coffee with this bloke. And then from the big house, which is um, this roller door rolls up, Mick Fanning just rolls out casual as you like, walks in, how you going, boys? And it's like Nick um, Vossen's, um idol. He's just said gobsmacked. Like, we didn't know what was going on. And this bloke hasn't told us he's, we're at Nick Fanning's house. His mate in Geelong hasn't said, oh, you're going to Mick Fanning's house. And yeah, he's just an absolute legend, ripping bloke. He's like, are you going to the airport now, are you? Because our bags are there. And we said, yeah. He goes, oh, I jump in, boys. I need to get out of the house. He'd give me something to do. 
Like absolute legend. That is so bloke, cool, man. Lost and sitting there trying not to say something stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's trying to keep it real cool. Um, but yeah, ripping fella, crazy experience. Like just insane. Oh, um, yeah. Tigger would have been starved, especially when yeah. you surprise. I mean, it's probably like when you boys go surprise kids and all that with the Richmond fans, and you get the, he's getting the same experience. Yeah, yeah, Even you would have been, go, but that's like the random surprise would have oh, been. Yeah. Was he? Could you see that he was in shock? Yeah, yeah. As soon as you looked at, I looked at because I'm not a massive surfing fan, but I know who Mick Fanning is. I'm like, Fuck, I swear that's Mick Fanning. And I looked at Tigger and Tigger's just drooling in the corner. <laughs> oh, yeah, that must be Mick Fanning. Yeah, he's like, hey, boys, Mick, Mick. Yeah, nice to meet you. And then he's just giving you a lift at the yeah, airport. Yeah, jump in, boys. Oh, Let's go. Yeah, you can see ripper. why everyone yeah. loves him. Yeah, never hear a bad word about him. Nah. Yeah, absolute ripper. Nah, that yeah. is so cool, man. Well done. Big shout out yeah. to Mick and uh, Tigger. That is yeah. so good. <laughs> Was Tigger like telling everyone at the club that next yeah, week? He just couldn't believe He's just like, yeah. fuck it. Look, should have got a photo. Yeah, should have got something yeah, signed or yeah. whatever. But you never get the photo in that one because you're trying to play it cool. Yeah, you don't want to be like the nuffy, like, yeah, hey, yeah. Just take cool, act cool, <laughs> mate. That is so that is elite. That is so. I just wanted you to share that story because yeah. I knew you'd sneaked it in earlier. I was, oh, it's a cracker. Well, mate, can't thank you enough for being here. Um, but I've got one more for you, and, and I mean, this is the I've been so excited to give you this. I always love, um, you know, getting great people on the potty, but when it comes to Milwaukee Tools, um, They've been such great sponsors of this show. And a lot of our guests, they're not that handy. You know, I'll put my hand up as well, but you're the opposite. You are one of the handiest blokes I know. Um, and it gives me great pleasure in in giving you not only this, there's a few more tools to come, um, but you'll get the you'll get the M18 fuel hatchet uh, pruning saw. That's just the tool there. You'll also get a starter pack. Um, which is elite. So yeah, the printing saw delivers maximum control and access, has the power to cut hard wood while delivering fast cuts, designed to meet the ergonomic performance and durability needs of a professional users, including hitting full throttle in under one second, and also comes with that M18 fuel 12 amp starter pack to get you going immediately, which I know you don't even need because you're a big fan, I hear. I am a massive fan of Milwaukee. I know we, uh, I think you had Dion on the show uh, a couple of months back and Dion, you know, gets a few tools. He wouldn't know what the fuck any of those are. <laughs> He's useless with stuff like this, but I'm a massive Milwaukee man. I'll absolutely love it uh, from the country back in Perth. So um, love me tools, love me gardens. Funny story about we had bought my house in Thornbury um, four years ago, whatever, and Redid the lawn from scratch, just did it all myself, got it going, um, got it beautiful, my pride and joy. It was like my little, my firstborn kid <laughs> and then sold up and we got a new place and we're renting at the moment and I was on footy trip and Taylor's doing the house hunting and she's like, oh, I got this place, I love it. I said, yep, yep, happy wife, happy life, get it, honey, whatever you want, <laughs> if you like it. She gets it, all's good. I get there after when we move in. There's not one fucking inch of lawn. It's oh. all fake turf. <laughs> not one. I'm livid. I'm absolutely livid. So I'm, I'm going around blokes' houses, doing their irrigation, doing their lawn stream. I was at Dion's on the weekend, putting in sprinklers and lawns and stuff. So um, no, it'll, it'll definitely go a long way with the Milwaukee stuff. Add it to the collection. That's epic. Why Why the obsession with the grass? I know like Taylor used to always put um, you know, Instagram stories up of you and you'd just be at Bunnings and you'd be working on the grass. You'd be like Cam Smith. He loves his grass and I know you love your golf. Where, where did it all come from? You always just loved the, always, the outdoors yeah. always like yeah grew up on a uh, farm when i was younger and then just i don't know i always love lawn i find it therapeutic just being out there mowing the lawns at night time just have a beer in the hand and water the lawn um and then maybe that's why i'm absolutely obsessed with golf too because you get pristine lawn oh, yeah. out on a golf course so i don't know when it started but I've, I've always had lawn growing up and always been wanting to keep it a1 yeah oh that's brilliant yeah. mate that's brilliant you said you've already got a few tools from milwaukee what, what's your favorite tool that you got at home Oh yeah, I've got a lot. I've got the drop saw, which is good. I've got about probably 10 to 15 Milwaukee stuff already at the moment, but I don't have this bad boy. Oh, you don't so, have that. That's brilliant. Nah, Grimes has got this. Grimes is a Milwaukee man himself. Um, so I have used it and it is an absolute weapon. It is. Yeah, yeah. So, and they got um, the batteries as well, which I hear yeah. are very tough to come by. So you got the starter pack coming your way as well. No, thank you, mate. Wrapped. Oh, wrapped. That's brilliant. Now with the Milwaukee tool, we always like to ask a couple of questions. I'll ask you too. Start with the handiest moment of your career, the Milwaukee tool handiest moment. When you look back now, um, even I want to talk about when you're 18 to 22 again before you got drafted. Was there one game where you thought that is, you know, that's one of the handiest things I've done? I reckon that's what's helped me get get the chocolates and get drafted. Um, geez. I think one game, Jack Darling came back when we played East Perth. He came back, um, maybe come back from injury or something. Um, played on him and that and, and went okay. And um, I think that's what what got me looked at more, you know, that I think they might have been there looking at someone else. And obviously Jack was already on the list. 
Um, and then I think that's what they were like, oh, maybe there's something here. So um, maybe that day might have been helped me out get where I am now. That's yeah. Beautiful. yeah, they definitely would have helped. They uh, they would have been looking and going, who's that guy? That's great. There you go. The Milwaukee Tool handiest moment playing on Jack Darling at the Swannies. Now the last one, the Milwaukee Tool, uh, I guess, in the locker room. This is a good thing. We love tools. I was probably a tool. I think anyone that energizes that that locker room, I think we've already had Dion lock in one of the boys. So I wonder if it's the same player. Who would be the guy in the locker room that is the, the Milwaukee Tool that just fires everyone up, win, loss, or draw? Oh, it's hard to go past Camden McIntosh. He... <laughs> <laughs> he's a weapon. He's got this fucking thing at the moment. He does. I won't do it because it'll. But he'll be in a quiet room or a meeting. He'll just sit there, like everyone's just sitting there with him, and then he'll go, <laughs> but like <laughs> as loud as he can go, and he just does it in places you shouldn't do it. Like you know, if the board's there or something or whatever. Like he takes no prisoners. Candy McIntosh just does not care. Nah, he takes no prisoners. Um, he's but he's a ripper for the club. He's a little glue man. Um, bought everyone Easter egg today. So had Easter Did eggs. He? Yeah, Easter oh. eggs when you rocked up at the club all out in front of your locker. Uh, real good bloke. But um, yeah, he could do. He's got many of tricks up his sleeves. He's a weapon. <laughs> that is so good. Yeah. I'd love to be in a meeting room when it's real serious. Oh, it and scares it, the, the fuck out the of you. The boys start losing it. Yeah, you're just sitting there dead quiet or whatever in a meeting and he waits for the moment where it's just dead silence and then just <laughs> as loud as he can go no it just scares the life out of here yeah oh I miss the locker room so much that is yeah. so elite and the boys would have loved the eggs like no one not, not many people think about that but you yeah. need those blokes just to go oh how good's that Easter yeah, yeah you walk in and you know walk in and you see that and you're oh, a bit of a perk in your step you know someone yeah. sort of I thought we thought the club did it but apparently yeah Camden's come out and the boys have said he did it tell so. me it was Cadbury there's only one brand it's got to be Cadbury no, Daryl Lee oh Daryl Lee's pretty yeah, good yeah Daryl Lee's That's pretty actually, good he's actually was, up to that it would have been more expensive there was yeah, they had like, some of them had um, fantails inside them. Some of them had like raspberry stuff inside. You could shake them and oh, stuff. Oh, so in he's gone all out. He's gone all out. Yeah, yeah. He's oh. got too much money, that bloke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've heard a, we're going to get him on the podcast because I heard he's got a great story. Um, he's got many great stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's got a few. <laughs> Brother, thanks so much for coming on. Um, real grateful to hear your story as well. I didn't know that. If I hadn't known that, well, we, we did touch on it, which I'm, it was so cool to hear. A lot of people will love that. You know, I think yeah. blokes like you relate to the, uh, the Aces community a lot lot and uh, the main thing is yeah stay make sure you're grateful stay hungry keep going don't give up um, and make sure you send us some footage when you are just having an absolute crack just getting the tools out because I know you love it um, thanks so much mate all the best for the rest of the year and no doubt you'll be back on uh, later in the year when you're in the finals and amongst it so yeah thanks mate beautiful thanks Tommy beautiful Thanks for listening to another episode of Tommy Talks where you literally can't thank you enough for all your support speaking of support our great mates, Milwaukee Tools. Without yours, we wouldn't be here. Milwaukee Outdoor Power Equipment gives you the power to clear, cut, and maintain the outdoors without the petrol headaches. No pull starts, no engine maintenance, no mixing petrol and oil. Book a test drive now at milwaukeetools.com.au. Milwaukee, nothing but heavy duty. And remember, Beard and Blade is your one-stop shop for all your manly grooming needs. Beard & Blade offers an extensive range of men's premium grooming products that are designed to provide a closer, smoother, and more comfortable shave. With over 90 brands available and products ranging from razors, beard oils, shaving creams to skincare and hairstyling, it's time to upgrade your shave. Visit beardandblade.com.au, Australia's number one online men's grooming company. Make the switch today to Beard & Blade. Righto, we'll see you on the next podcast.